Hey everyone, Sam Dunn here for Overkill Reviews. Great to be back. A little update from me. Our Triumph documentary, Rock and Roll Machine, had its US premiere at the Philadelphia International Film Festival. And otherwise, well, I've been digging into this little ditty. My buddy Jason Flowers, Supreme Echo in Victoria, BC, has released Malevolence Apparitions, some remastering of a couple demos from a great thrash metal band from out west, a little bit of history, a whole lot of great stuff. This basically looked exactly like my bedroom wall when I was about 16 years old. Sounds great, has really kind of stood up the test of time. Good job, Supreme Echo. But I'm really here to talk about one of the most anticipated metal albums of 2021. That is the new album from Mastodon called Hushed and Grim, released today, clocking in at 80 plus minutes, 15 songs. It's a bit of an opus, and we'll get into that. But here, just a little bit of background for y'all on the boys from Atlanta, Georgia. Formed in 2000, Troy, Brent, Bill, and Braun. They released a couple of EPs right out of the gate. Their first full length was Remission in 2002. Second album, Leviathan, was kind of the real album that, that broke them through, loosely based on the Moby Dick concept and got them into Rolling Stone and a bit of a buzz. Their major label debut with Blood Mountain came in 2006, followed by possibly my favorite Mastodon record, and really the one that kind of moved them into a whole new echelon of progressive metal. That, of course, is Crack the Sky. You know, they followed with The Hunter and Once More Round the Sun, and then their previous album released in 2017 called Emperor of Sand won them a Grammy for best metal performance for the song Salton's Curse. That's enough of that damn history. Let's get to the new stuff. All right, let's start off with a couple uh, disclosures slash caveats. First, I drink the Kool-Aid, big fan of Mastodon, have been pretty much since Leviathan and have liked all their records for all sorts of different reasons. Second piece, Probably my most botched review in the history of Banger TV was my review of Emperor of Sand back in 2017. A good Mastodon record, but not an excellent Mastodon record. Why? Well, my first impressions were not particularly positive, but a few months passed, more months passed, and lo and behold, it became one of my favorite records, not only of that year, but of the entire decade. And I'm kind of now in the process of pulling my giant foot out of my giant mouth. So what does that say? Well, Mastodon is that band that sometimes takes a little time for it to really grab hold. So let's dig into Hushed and Grim. First thing that's clear about Hushed and Grim is it continues the tradition of Mastodon records geared around certain concepts or themes. Their first four albums were about fire, water, air, and earth. Not in that order, but you get what I mean. And subsequently, a lot of their albums have dealt with very serious personal issues that members of the band have experienced. Losing loved ones, illness, etc. And Hushed and Grimm is very much grounded in experiences of grief, particularly around the loss of their longtime manager, Nick John, rest in peace, never met Nick, but emailed him many times. And he was clearly the fifth member of Mastodon. So again, on Hushed and Grimm, continuing this tradition of really digging deep into emotions and the personal experiences of the band members. I'm not gonna go track by track on Hushed and Grimm. Why? Well, because there's 15 of them. It's a double album. We don't have time for that. But what I will say it's fairly clear that overall this album is continuing the path that they 
continued on Emperor of Sand of really diversifying and expanding their sound. There are heavy tracks, there are mellower tracks, there are on balance more mellower tracks than even on Emperor of Sand, proving once again that Mastodon is an album never content to stand still. There's a lot of those sludgy elements that fans of the very, very, very early records will love, but especially in the latter half of Hushed and Grim, this is a band that has backed off on the gas pedal quite a bit and starting to explore with some really atmospheric, much mellower, as I said, and really some more ballad type tracks than what they've ever done before. So yeah, warning to you early remission and Leviathan die by those sword fans out there. This is an album that's much more akin to Emperor of Sand than anything they've done before. Once again, the major element in this progression and evolution and reaching further and further for Mastodon is in the vocal department. We've got even more songs being sung by drummer Braun Daler, who has that really high, super clear, crisp voice. And even Troy Sanders, technically you know, the original lead singer of the band, is starting to stretch out as well beyond that kind of guttural sludgy tone that we've we've known him for. We've got a lot of the, the more chicken picking twangy contributions from Brent and, and Bill. He's just right down the middle still delivering some really solid riffs. The guy's like an encyclopedia. I don't know how he churns all that stuff out. For me, there's some standout tracks. Love the opener, Pain with an Anchor. I'm on board even with Sickle and Peace, which is clearly doing a lot of kind of almost funky off kilter work, pushing the tides. One of the advanced tracks uh, that many of you have seen is super strong in my opinion. And then late, they always manage to find a way to put a heavier track buried late into the album called Savage Lands, which I think is one of the stronger songs on the record. But, and here's my big butt, and I think I'm having deja vu from Emperor of Sand. The rest of the album felt meandering because right now, after listening to the album a handful of times, really digging the first half or so of the album. And then the album gradually gets a lot less riff oriented, a lot more relaxed and you know, it loses me a bit. Now, this even further broadening out in the sound of Mastodon may have something to do with producer David Bottrell coming to the helm on this album for the first time. And, you know, apparently recommended by Danny Carey from Tool and Bottrell, of course, famous for working with Tool. No surprise, Mastodon wanting to work with Bottrell and maybe Bottrell having some hand in encouraging the band to reach farther than they ever have before. All right, full disclosure, it's hard for me to do reviews of albums by bands that I am super fans of because it's like the expectations are high, you want to like it, and sometimes for me it's a bit of tough love. You know, you just, you're, you're kind of harder on those bands because you expect so much. And that's the case with Mastodon once again. Maybe a bit of a deja vu with Emperor of Sand. Really captivated by the first half of the album, loving the mix of the more intense tracks and some of the mellower work. But then as the album progresses, it just kind of drifts off a little for me. Now, many of you said that I totally 
Lost the Plot on Emperor of Sand and songs like Jaguar Dog, the final track on Emperor of Sand. Many of you said that was one of the best songs that Mastodon ever created. Don't know if I agree with that exactly, but I get the point. So for me, where does it fall? It falls right where Emperor of Sand fell four years ago. However, I reserve the right to completely change my mind in a few months time when I have even more time with this record by Mastodon, who, let's just be honest, any album by Mastodon is a good album and a good album for metal and a good album for music. I'm giving it three and a half skulls out of five on Overkill Reviews. But before we go, gotta do some shout outs. Shout -outs. I got a little flack last time on my Gojira review because I didn't do any, so here we go. All these records also released today. We've got Whitechapel Kin on Metal Blade. We've got Lucifer 4 on Century Media. We've got John 5, his album Sinner out on Big Machine Records. Arcspire, Canadian metal album called Bleed the Future, released on Season of Mist. And lastly, we've got Monolords, Your Time to Shine, out on Relapse Records. And yeah, one last time before I go, Supreme Echo, great underground Canadian metal from my old stomping ground, the West Coast. That's it from me. See you next time.